Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, September 20th meeting of the Hadley School Committee. Uh, do I have a motion to start the meeting? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, terrific. Um, we are going to, uh, we, it's the four of us today. Heather Klesch is um, uh, absent. Uh, we have a few adjustments to the agenda. Annie, do you want to take us through it? Sure. Uh, I will be providing the public with a brief update on our initial plans for our what's called ESSER funding. So the funding that came through as part of pandemic relief. We will not have business reports tonight. Um, Chris is still out on medical leave. He will be back in October and he'll take us through those reports when he returns. Um, and uh, I would like to add to the agenda a request to increase the per diem rate for substitute school nurses. That will require a motion. Um, and uh, there will be no CES report because um, Heather is not here this evening. Okay, great. And Annie, uh, I did have a question about um, uh, an update or minutes um, from the uh, two retreats. I know we just completed one this last Thursday. Um, what's the update there? So I will speak briefly about the uh, initial plans for our first uh, draft of the grant for our funding, but I will have a more comprehensive minutes and review at the October meeting. Great, thank you very much. Okay, at this time, we uh, will open it up for public comment. And just as a reminder, the uh, link to our policy on it is in the agenda. Um, you have a limit of uh, three minutes. And um, uh, let's uh, to, to speak, you just simply raise your digital hand and we will call on you in the order in which we see your hand. And I see Sarah Pegasus' hand. I will ask you to unmute. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have one main comment tonight. Um, there's a few other things on my mind, but I mean, my main point that I want to get across is I'm really, really disappointed that pool testing did not start right away. I don't know how in three months of summer a company isn't ready to go, but it was the one thing that I kind of had made me feel a little better about my kid going back to school. He has an underlying health condition, so it was really disappointing to see. I'm hoping tonight someone can say that there is a start date for pool testing. I did see an email about the company got our order or something like that. I can't remember the wording. Um, but it didn't sound like pool testing was starting like this week. So I'm hoping that there is an update on that. Um, I do find lunch a little, I, I mean, I, I understand that the kids are separated in the lunchroom. I just thought that maybe I'm remembering wrong, but I thought last year you, you were outside if it was nice weather for lunch. Um, maybe I'm remembering wrong and maybe that was discontinued and I missed that. Um, but those were the two things on my mind. Really, the pool testing was the biggest thing on my mind because I was really banking on that to make me feel better. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that, I don't know if that's Annie's part, if she could give some kind of update on that um, to alleviate my concerns, hopefully. Um, but that was my comment to me. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. And um, uh, I think Annie, I saw a nodding of head, so I think she will bring it up later. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, I think I saw Emily Pfeiffer's hand next. Emily, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, three things, and I'm not going to bury the lead. One, please make sure bus windows are open. Two, please mandate vaccines. And three, please keep masks required for everyone. A little bit of detail around them, but I just wanted to be clear what I was asking for. Uh, the bus windows should be open. They're supposed to be open. If they're not, and there's a positive case on the bus, every unvaccinated person on the bus is a close contact and has to quarantine per CDC guidelines. 
So what I've seen, what other parents have confirmed is that they just haven't always been open. Some of the kids can not open them either way. They're kids and they're just not going to be really responsible about it. So I know it's another thing to ask already overworked bus drivers to do, but just please, if we can make that a priority. Second, please mandate vaccines. Um, Baker has tossed the responsibility to local districts. That's hard. The MTA supports mandatory vaccines for all employees and eligible students. Most of Massachusetts' largest colleges and universities require their students to be vaccinated. And even though UMass has a 96% vaccination rate, it still records hundreds of cases. So uh, we know Northampton has voted to mandate vaccine for all staff. I think Amherst has a vote coming up. It's not unheard of. And we're squarely in the CDC's high transmission bracket, which is the highest of four categories. The numbers are much higher than they were last year when we were 100% remote. That was number two. Number three is um, there's been a lot of rhetoric being repeated that's really concerning to me. Um, We know that current guidelines say after October 1st, if the school is 80% vaccinated than vaccinated folks aren't required to wear a mask. And when I express concern, what I keep hearing is, but don't worry, you can still choose to wear a mask. Your kid can still wear a mask. So I just wanted to say out loud in this forum, that's not how masks work. My mask keeps you safer and yours keeps mine safer. So telling somebody to wear a mask if they're worried really doesn't help. So everybody keeping a mask on keeps it safer for everybody else. And those are the three things I'm asking you to please do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. I believe um, at least one, if not multiple, a couple of those topics will be on Annie's um, agenda to talk about in just a moment. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Rachel Briggs, I'm asking you to unmute. Uh, Hi, thank you so much. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. I had a bunch of new hardware today, just got to make sure. Um, Thank you for your time today. And I just, in a similar vein to to Sarah and to Emily. Um, I see it's on the agenda, but I want to, like last month, reiterate my support uh, for a vaccination mandate. Actually a professor at UMass, so I'm seeing firsthand uh, these really horrible outbreaks that are happening even with 96 something percentage uh, vaccinated on campus. Um, I want to uh, also with the reiterate what Emily said about the mask requirements. Um, And I just want to publicly note my continued support for us to have continued masking requirements in the schools. It keeps everybody safer. Uh, And then the last thing I am hoping to to see at at the school is um, stronger language and directives around snacks and lunch being outside. So the language right now, it originally said something about when possible, um, and now my kid's been out sick last couple of days with a COVID scare uh, and uh, respiratory symptoms. Um, but prior to that, you know, uh, she was saying, grain of salt, she's in kindergarten, that <laughs> they hadn't had lunch outdoors yet or snack outdoors yet. And so, um, you know, when possible has seemed to turn into hardly ever or not at all. So I just really like to see some stronger more directive language around that, some clear guidelines around what means not possible. And, uh, and then the other thing is I want to offer my support because I know everybody's busy and stressed and, and short staffed. Um, and whether that's, um, I don't know, donation of blankets for kid, kiddos to sit on. Uh, you know, I have a flexible schedule because I am a professor at UMass. Like, I, I would be willing to do some outdoor supervisory stuff once a week. I don't know. I just don't, you know, I don't want to be that parent that is all critical. Uh, I do want to say that that I, I want to support the teachers in this as well as much as I can. Um, so that's all. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I know the lunch outdoor issue has come up before. I think it came up in the last month's meeting. And um, Annie, I don't know if you intend to talk about it today, but if not, maybe we can just find out what some of the issues are and whether we have volunteer staff to make that happen. I think it's different at the schools. If I recall correctly, there was a different strategy at each of the schools, but um, maybe we could bring that up later. Um, Thank you for that. I don't see any other hands. I think that's it for public comment. Thank you everyone for, um, for commenting.
And now for the presentation and discussion items. Um, first up is pre-K handbook and summary of changes. Annie. Actually, Ms. Winter is here with us this evening. Thank you so much for being here, Lauren. I really appreciate it. The public and the school committee have links to the entire document, but also you can just go through the summary of changes. And if they have any questions, they can certainly ask you that. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us a chance to speak. We really appreciate it. Um, I will make this very brief. Much of what we are changing this year is simply going from where we were last year, looking at things for COVID and coming back to where we are this year. Um, the first change that we made, obviously we have Miss Celia Snow. So her name has been added to our handbook under um, Director of Student Services. We also, um, there was no late start to school this year. We all started right on time. We welcome little faces into our classrooms. We were able to change that from a um, September 17th beginning to a September 7th beginning. We were also able to go right back into full days. Last year, a full day was considered 1 p.m. Now we're right back to our 2.45 to 3 o'clock pickup. So that was wonderful to change back. We did increase the rate slightly this year. So we are right on par with area daycares and other um, facilities that have tuition-based programs. So we did raise those up. I believe it was a 1.5% increase. So not a huge increase, but enough to um, keep us current. We also um, had taken out the option for the long extended morning, which of course was our one o'clock pickup. And our student drop off and our pickup procedures are a little bit different. Instead of doing curbside delivery of children, we have much bigger classes. So we felt more comfortable keeping them in the school where we know where they are and they're nicely contained near their lockers. Um, rather than having them kind of out on that little street corner, which worked out really well last year when we just had a few. But now that we have more, we've moved them into a different location. So we have adults come to us instead and we have them dismissed. Um, we've asked for families to please wear their masks, social distance, and we have adults that will come back and forth and help to ferry the children um, to their appropriate pickup person. And really that's it. <laughs> Luckily we've, we've kept things very much the same. Um, the things that we were able to update last year have helped us a lot this year, especially in terms of our cleaning procedures and things like that. And so with just a few minor tweaks, that will be our handbook for this year if it's approved. That's terrific. Um, I wanna start first by um, thanking you for getting things restarted. I know people were longing for the program to come back. And uh, the other day, um, the school committee had a retreat and we were walking through the hallway, passing the preschool classes and all reminiscing about those early days. Uh, I think we all had children in that program. And so we're glad to see it back and available to the public. It's such an important resource for our community. Um, I don't have any comments on the changes specifically. Um, how about my colleagues? See nodding. I think we're good. All right. So uh, this requires a vote. Is that true, Annie? All right. Do I hear a motion to approve the changes as recommended? So moved. And a second. Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, and, uh, Thank you Lauren. Sharing back how the school year goes. Thank you. We're excited. Thanks. Thank you, Lauren. Okay. All right, the next item on the agenda are vaccine mandates, state and local policies, practices, and recommendations. Annie. Yes, and I will do my best to also just address some of the other things that were brought up during public comment. So starting with vaccines, just first of all, would um, in order to move forward, we know that uh, the Biden's rule is going to pass through, President Biden's rule is going to pass, we'll get an OSHA rule on that. Um, and in preparation for that rule, I imagine that the school committee would be interested in impact bargaining with the Hadley Education Association. And if that is the case, then we need um, a subcommittee for that and, um, and we can start scheduling those impact bargaining discussions. All right, and that is a team of two as per other yeah. impact bargaining. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I wonder, um, if there are a couple of volunteers who might be interested in helping um, have this conversation with HEA. And, and it, 
is that is that mainly the the mask mandate for companies with 100? No, people? this is a vaccine, and then any employer that employs over 100 people, which the school department does, um, is uh, employees are required to receive a COVID vaccine or submit to weekly testing. That's what the rule that we can expect that rule to be coming. Um, that's what President Biden would like, and we can expect that rule. With impact bargaining, just so the public is clear, it's not that um, labor organizations get to decide whether or not we implement laws. It's impact bargaining. So impact bargaining is what is the impact to working conditions? There's a, it's a change in working conditions, and we, we have to have a conversation about that even if the Hadley Education Association is majority and largely in favor. And I think if you look at the vaccination rates among our faculty and staff, they are very high. So you can see that the majority are in favor, but it's still required that whenever we, um, we can't just unilaterally change working conditions without having a conversation with labor. So um, the work is pretty straightforward then. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to, to help volunteer to if you marry. I think I said masks, but I meant vaccine. So it's because of the 100 person standard, but we're still waiting on the OSHA rule to come out. Is that correct? correct. That's exactly correct. right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. Do I hear another volunteer? Um, normally I, I would, but starting next week, I'm going to be out on medical um, reasons. So I don't want to hold up any timelines with that because I just don't know that I'd be able to commit to it. Um, but if it's pushed out and we need a second person, then I, I can help out. Or if it's this week, I can help out, but that's kind of quick. Um, otherwise, normally I would, but I'm probably going to be out for about two weeks. So I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you, Tara. Uh, I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Thank to you. kind of push this forward. Yeah, let's do it. Thank okay. You very much. I anticipate that the Hadley Education Association will send me in general um, dates and times that work for whichever representatives from their group are available and then we can kind of coordinate that together. Um, and then I know it's not explicitly indicated on the agenda, but I do have some updates for some of the questions that came up or concerns that came up during public comment. So if that's all right with you, Humira, I Please. could go ahead and go through that. Yes. Pool testing. So um, as the individual in, as Sarah said in public comment, uh, she acknowledged, um, that there have been some emails about this. It doesn't make it any less frustrating. So last year we worked with a different vendor. That vendor was this year, it's a statewide bid. The state has selected one vendor for pool testing. So we have a new vendor. And that vendor, the most recent email that I sent is that uh, we were, we have been told and it was confirmed today that the supplies have shipped now, I want to be really clear with the public. As soon as we were able to sign up for pool testing in August, we did. We did as soon as we were able to. I really want to thank that even though this isn't up and running, there have been a myriad of emails in our attempts to get this up and running. And I really want to thank Allison Willette and Robin Sizz, our two parents, who um, without them, we just this would not be happening because if we also had to wait for the staff for the state to provide us staff to do this, it, I, I don't know how long we would be waiting. So thank goodness we have people who have been working with me, emailing the state, reaching out to the state to make sure that we have everything that we need. And right now the last thing that we're waiting for. So part of it was there's a new software system. There's a new, there's several software systems these details are probably boring to most people, but all of this to say that um, we are waiting now simply for specimen collection materials. We can't pool test without the specimen collection materials. And it's our expectation that we will receive those this week. And if that comes to pass, then we will begin pool testing next week. That's all we're waiting for. And we've been told by the state that the order has shipped. Uh, so that's pool testing. I am also disappointed. Unfortunately, I have little to no control over that, but I do share the disappointment and frustration. That was pool testing. 
On bus windows, I want to apologize to any families who've experienced any stress around this. I've been in communication with our transportation provider today. Um, the lead person there has said that they will be also reminding their staff of the importance of checking bus windows during circle checks. I will follow up again with um, that company. I want to say that our transportation provider, Five Star, has been our provider for a very long time. I am in no way indicating that it's acceptable when um, these things don't happen in the manner in which we would like them to. But I just want to publicly say how much I appreciate Five Star. In many districts across the Commonwealth, the governors had to call in the National Guard to transport students because there simply aren't enough bus drivers. I am extraordinarily grateful for how quickly Five Star responds within minutes when I email, they pick up the phone and they certainly want to give us a high degree of customer satisfaction. So I'll follow up again tomorrow, but they did respond immediately today and said that they would um, remind all of their drivers of the importance of that. The vaccine we talked about and um, regarding the masks, just so people know, it isn't automatic that on October 1st, um, we look at the dashboard and ta-da, masks are off. Desi has yet to release the process for applying for having any changes. And that's not to say even when Desi releases that, school committee, HEA, others uh, may want to have a discussion. And okay, so maybe the school committee and the HEA want to have a discussion about what, what we continue and if or how we change our practices. But no matter what, not until the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education tells us how we would ask for permission to have people have the option to go maskless, could we even proceed? And there would be an attestation process. In addition to what DESI um, required at the end of August, right before that, our local Board of Health had given us a recommendation about masks in schools. And we have routinely deferred to the judgment of our local Board of Health. So, I just want people to be clear, it isn't like on October 1st, I look at the weekly dashboard and say, make an announcement, everybody take off your masks, it's not going to happen, or not even you now have an option. We would one, check with the local board of health, and two, um, changes to practice would be discussed um, with any relevant parties, and three, we could not, no matter what, even if the October 1 date is in fact the date that the commissioner decides to continue with, they haven't even issued us how we would go about demonstrating 80% and making that request. And I think that was everything that was brought up. Great, thank you, Annie. I think um, if, it sounds like while frustrating, we know what the situation is and there is a uh, solution on the horizon. If there wasn't, or if you felt like there was anything that we could do by writing a letter or passing a resolution or seeking a different supplier, I trust that you would tell us, but it sounds like we're almost there. And if we weren't, I ask you to just let us know because maybe we yeah. should look at other possibilities. Thank you for offering that help. I do believe that we are. And I, I, I do want to say personally, I know that the state is working as hard and as fast as they can. This is all schools now have this option, including private schools and the vendor is also working furiously. So, but if um, the vendor or the state become non-responsive, which has not been my experience, I certainly will enlist your assistance and I appreciate that. Okay, great. I have to say, just to close on that, I feel I'm a little disappointed that they switched suppliers. Get uh, in light of you know the fact that we had something that was working. Like, really, did we have to go messing with that too? Uh, but it is what it is, and it sounds like it's largely out of our control. Thank you. Hey, and can I ask about the vaccination? So the vaccination of the OSHA rule would apply to employees, correct? Yes. So I heard parents, and and just correct me if I'm wrong about what other school districts are doing. Are they talking about requiring vaccines for? Uh, students that are age eligible? 
I can collect data for you on that. I do know, I believe that the Amherst Board of Health did that not all for age eligible. I believe they did 16 because the the emergency authorization, so the complete approval is only for 16 and up. Am I correct on that? 12. 12. Um, in other words, the federal government has authorized Pfizer to be used from, for 12 and up. Yeah, but I believe that from 12 to 15, I can check this, but I believe that the that within that 12 and up age group that some are still under emergency authorization and 16 and up is not. Uh, I can verify that. But so it's not all the way down to 12, although Pfizer has been approved all the way down to 12. Um I don't believe that the full approval. Yeah, that's I correct. That's, am that's I correct? Right. Thank you. So that so they are not mandating it for children who would still the vaccine would still be considered emergency authorization. Um, and I can collect data on other districts and vaccine requirements. Yeah, that occurred. I actually hadn't heard seen that distinction until you brought it up. I didn't realize FDA was just down to sixteen. Mm -hmm. 12 to 15 is the emergency use. Yeah, I, mean, I was just curious because I know I, I heard one of the parents ask about requiring it for students as well. No, the impact bargaining, um, well, anything can come from the impact bargaining. Yeah. And I know we're a ways away from this, but today in national news, there's some indication that the um, uh, CDC, I think it is, is uh, thinking about approving Pfizer for five and up. Um, again, I don't know what stage that is, but it's coming. And that's, I, in my view, that's promising. Okay. Uh, any other comments on this topic from my colleagues? Okay, terrific. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. There was one other thing that came up there. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, let me make sure because I was writing down notes. Rachel uh, had asked about outdoor lunch. Um, so I, I don't want to miss that. So let me just uh, also say that um, some of the issues uh, the parent touched upon, so it can do, it, sometimes it has to do with supervision. Uh, also, it may be that the supervision of students during that time period or in that way is also subject to impact bargaining. People sometimes wonder, well, what's different about last year? Last year, we had a one-year agreement um, about some of these things. And um, for the majority of the year, we didn't have lunch on campus at all. Um, but I will certainly, um, that's not the answer the individual is looking for, I will certainly um, have a conversation. I'll add it to our uh, leadership team agenda this week and um, see what the um, opportunities and obstacles are for that. Is that something that is a conversation that should be had <laughs> alongside the, uh, the one on vaccine mandates? While Paul and Ethan are talking about that, is that something that should, we sh that should be discussed or sh is that something that leadership can probably navigate? We'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe. I'll, I'll talk with uh, the building principals and others about um, what are some of those, like I said, opportunities and obstacles? Um, I'm not in the buildings every day at lunch, so I'll, I'll start there. And then it may be something that uh, could also be a part of the other conversation. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. The next item is HPS employee handbook and summary of changes. Yeah. So this should be really straightforward. Um, uh, we have a change, the uh, approval, uh, just making sure the title page says that it's approved by the school committee. Um, the equal opportunity employment paragraph updated for the attorney, uh, adding Juneteenth as a paid holiday. Um, we had a situation currently as this handbook is written for non-union employees or employees who weren't covered by a collective bargaining agreement. They have, um, for a long, long time, it's written that they can't take any vacation in the first year. So we'd like them to be able to take a vacation they've accrued in their first year of employment, uh, removed any references to duplicate forms. Um, 
that uh, vacation holiday personal on sick are no longer included in computation of overtime. That's a change at the town level. So overtime, computation of overtime is actual hours worked, not all hours worked. Um, and uh, to allow employees to take paid time off in two hour increments, now they're required to take it in half or full days. So those are the changes and it would require approval and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. I don't have any questions. Um, how about anyone else on the team? Seems straightforward to me. Yeah, okay, great. Um, like, I, yes. I don't have any questions about that, but I, any, while I was looking at that and while you were talking, it did um, bring up something unrelated, I, I kind of related, I guess. Did we need to be looking at the um, school calendar at all for any adjustments? Um, in terms of, um, in terms of like conferences or anything like parent teacher conferences or, um, so I can ask you later too, if it's not, no, like, no, no, uh, I'm sorry. I was thinking you were thinking Juneteenth is already listed as a, as a holiday this year, uh, a Monday holiday. So I thought you were referring to that. Um, let me change gears here, uh, regarding, parent and teacher conferences, we're looking to finalize that this week and also okay. finalize when it makes sense to have more of an in-person aggregate ga gathering, what open house used to be, and does it make more sense to do something in person, everybody in the spring. Um, but we are figuring out right now the when and how parent conferences. And we anticipate okay. that we'll have that resolved next week and then we will update families and, and update the calendar. Um, accordingly, and I probably will then need to just at least get three folks together who could vote um, on the half days that we would need to add. It says TBD. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you for a okay. loop. I just wanted That's to make sure it wasn't something we needed to discuss. So thank you. So I have no problems with, every, with the handbook. Thanks, Tara. Okay, so do I hear a motion to approve the summary of changes as uh, recommended? So moved. And second. Perry, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Motion passes. Terrific. Um, and moving on to request for com from community member endorsement <laughs> House Bill H926. Uh, so, Humera, do you want me to do that? Do uh, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, My, sure. Uh, pretty excited. <laughs> That's sure, no problem. So, uh, Humera received an email through the form submission, the school email. A community member, I believe, requesting that the school committee um, take a pos position in support of House Bill uh, 926. House Bill 926 has to do with the use of pesticides on playgrounds and school property. Um, the person did acknowledge that our pesticide management plan, we, we aren't using anything to cause any concern. So the individual acknowledged that they were requesting more just in general, perhaps not everybody is doing what Hadley is doing. And so would the school committee consider um, going on the record and stating support for the bill? I did reach out to Glenn Kucher from the MASC and asked him if other school committees had taken a position on this, if and Mass Association of School Committees was doing any advocacy work around this. And uh, if he had, <clears throat> if school committees had in fact kind of stated a resolution or made a statement of endorsement, if um, he could share some of that language. So I'm certainly happy to bring that back to the school committee. I don't have that this evening, but I'm happy to bring it back to the school committee if that's helpful. Yes, that's helpful. Thank you for reaching out. And um, why don't we, um, unless there's someone else who has a position on this, we can talk about it when there's more information and uh, a desire to move it forward. Um, is there, does anyone have a position on this either way? Okay, let's wait to hear back. Great, thank you, Andy, for looking into that. Uh, five business manager reports. Chris is not in. We're gonna have the business manager reports next month instead. And so onward to six, school committee reports and discussion. Um, Clash will give the CES report next month. Finance, Ethan. 
Uh, yeah, just a, a quick update. There's a, a finance meeting later this week uh, that I'll attend. Uh, there was a tri-board meeting at the beginning of the month uh, in which the finance committee shared a presentation about a potential split tax rate for the town just for this year. Uh, I, I thought it was a pretty informative presentation, talked about some of the benefits for residentials, uh, re residential properties versus the impact it could have on the, the small businesses and businesses uh, in general. Um, this would just, again, be a one-year tax rate uh, idea that they're thinking of in terms of splitting the tax rate. Uh, he did, uh, the presenter did make a point to say that there would be no additional revenue uh, from this split tax for this year, and that it would obviously have to be voted on again next year if there was something to continue. Uh, sounds like there's more conversation to come. Obviously, it's in the select board's hands, um, but it was, a, it was a good presentation to kind of get a better sense of what that would do for the town this year. Thank you, Ethan. I know that's something that's come up uh, a number of times casually in the past, so it's interesting to hear that there was a conversation about it. That was this last tri-board meeting, and they'll put yeah, a Zoom recording online. Yeah, there, there's there's a the recording of it online. It's about about 20 minutes in. There was something before that, but it, it is interesting just because there is a potential impact for residential tax amounts to increase quite a bit this year, and so they're looking to offset that with the split tax rate. Um, but there's a lot of numbers getting thrown around at this point. So, um, and they are concerned about the small businesses, the farms that are not, um, I'll say what they said under a certain chapter that, that allows them to, to get the tax breaks. And so um, there was a really good conversation around it between the finance committee and the select board. Um, definitely worth just poking around on it, um, but it, it'll be an interesting conversation going forward. Great, thank you. And policy, Kruger. Um, we did not have a meeting today, so we'll be meeting at the end of October, and so we'll have an update then. Great, thank you, Tara. And uh, Fields and Capital, Paul. Um, nothing big. I, I have had folks ask me, they've been playing out in the soccer field, the new soccer field that's further out um, in the new area, and there's some uh, topography to it and folks have asked me well why um, was that planned and it de definitely was uh, I'll, I'll remind folks this is all happening in a floodplain so there's strict state and federal rules about how we manage water coming off that area we can either increase or decrease elevation and so the, the water management is, is very heavily orchestrated out there so much so that it was touch and go for a while about doing the fields project um, and so all the water is drained to certain the drainage system that underlies the, the new area. And so there is a bit of mounding that happens so that we can direct the water where it needs to go. Um, other than that, I don't know, Annie, if you have anything to add? I do only because it reminded me when we said capital, the ESSER update, if that's okay. So ESSER, I can't stand speaking to ac acronyms. So it's the elementary secondary uh, something recovery. So. Sorry, but it's the funding that came from COVID um, that schools, that towns and schools received. So we did send out a survey to families and to staff, and there was a lot of very good input on that survey. And it was clear that one thing that the majority of respondents agreed on as a priority, as a top priority, was um, building facilities that um, provide for the health and safety of students. So our um, Esser, and, and please know that these grants, the, we can expend these grants through um, fiscal year 24. So through June 30, 2024 is when we have to have the funds expended by, and we can amend them as uh, frequently as we need to. But the focus of the grants in the first draft of the grant in the first draft will be on facilities improvement um, and we are also, as folks know, funding social and emotional supports primarily in the form of a social and emotional learning coach for the district. Um, to, we know that we want children physically safe and we also want them emotionally safe and supported. So that's the first pass of ESSER. Great, thank you, Annie. Um, any questions on that from the team? Okay. Great, so I think we've made our way through the agenda. Uh, announcements, um, announcements from the school committee. Does anyone have any announcements? 
Okay, I'll make an announcement. Um, so our three-part Hadley Learns uh, um, series of events, September, October, and November is on Indigenous matters. Um, and this is a collaboration, first time collaboration with the Hadley Public Schools uh, and the libraries and also the Committee on Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. And tonight um, they'll be um, live on TV5 and then available on Zoom afterwards, a, uh, an interview with the filmmaker for uh, the Great Falls Hidden Landscapes, um, which is all about those ceremonial stone structures that are being found and what purpose they serve. It's right here under our nose. Fascinating movie that the team of Hadley Learns purchased for everyone in the Hadley community to watch. And that's available for free on Vimeo through September 30th. So if you go to hadleylearns.com, you can register in the event section. And then we send you the link by way of email so you can watch that movie. But tonight at seven o'clock is the time with that filmmaker to ask what's happened since then and just to learn more about it. So um, I welcome everyone to join us um, with this great collaborative event. Um, I think that's it for that uh, announcement. And so moving on to action items, we have uh, already approved the pre-K handbook, the employee handbook, uh, we need to approve the AP warrants for August 2021. I believe this is the one that Heather does not vote on. And so do I have a motion to approve the AP yes. warrants for August 2021? So moved. Seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great, thank you. And it's the uh, next is the approval of warrants for August 2021, and that is the one that Paul doesn't vote on. Um, so, uh, Ethan, Tara, and I, um, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. And approval of the minutes for August 30th, 2021. Sorry, and I'm just recording Paul as an abstention. That's right. Thank you, Paul. And approval of the minutes for August 30th, 2021. Do I hear a motion? So moved. All right, and second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. Uh, our next meeting dates are um, October 25th, 5.30 for the regular school committee meeting and um, the policy subcommittee will meet half an hour prior on the same line. Um, we don't need executive session, sorry. No need for executive session. All right, no need for executive session this evening. And I think that's our record, less than 45 minutes of a school committee meeting. I will say I, I'll miss the next school committee meeting. I have a, a business uh, meeting to attend. We will miss you, Paul, and um, but we'll catch you on the next go round. That's good. All right. Yeah, this is a record, 42 mm -hmm. minutes, wow. This is very efficient. Thank you very much, everyone. It's nice to see you and see you again uh, for the month of October. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Or... Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, great idea. Great idea. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great night, Bye, everyone. everyone. Thanks.